Hello everyone. Today I'm going to show you how Anchor to Position Nodon works and some of its applications, such as adding circular movement and responsive moving platform. Okay, first of all, where can we find this Anchor to Position Nodon? This Anchor to Position Nodon can be found at Meter angle calculation, and then angle to position. What does this do exactly? Let's read some hints. So the first hint say, if you input an angle into this nodon, it will output the xy coordinates of that position on a circle with a 1.0 radius. So yeah, let's create a 1.0 radius circle or a unit circle and what about other hints another hint is that the input should be an angle with a full circle being 360 if i keep increasing an angle to 360 the movement here will be a full circle okay next Let's understand the input. The input is the angle, right? As I have shown you before, the angle defines how we want to move this black line. If the value is positive, we will move counterclockwise or in this direction. But when the value is negative, we will move it clockwise or yeah, in this direction. There are two outputs for this node on horizontal and vertical positions. What does each output mean? Let's start with horizontal. Before we continue, I'm going to call the intersection between this line and the unit circle an end point. So what does the first output horizontal position mean? The horizontal position means the horizontal distance between the center to the end point. Only the horizontal, so it does not mean this distance, but it means the distance here, which in this case, 0.81. But if we keep increasing the angle, now the horizontal distance will be smaller. And now it is 0.34 at angle 70. In trigonometry, we call this value cosine. What about the vertical output? The vertical position is the y coordinate of the end part, or the vertical distances from the origin to this part. For example, here at angle negative, 46. The end point is here and the vertical position is this y position which is negative 0 0.72. Let me show you a few more examples. So here at angle 0, the horizontal output is 1 but the vertical is just 0 because the point is here and I mean there are no vertical distances between this center to this point. But when the angle is let's say 30, now the horizontal output is 0.86 and the vertical output is 0.5 which is this. If I continue moving the angle at 60 degree, the horizontal output becomes 0.5 and the vertical output is now 0.85. Yeah and now we have understood this nodon. I will show you how to use this nodon for moving platforms and also like for moving any characters. Okay, the first application that I'm going to show you is how to create a circular platform. So to create a circular moving platform, we are going to use a free slider. And to use a free slider, I need a fixed position box first. This box is going to be the center of our circle. So I'm going to remove all the properties. And then I'm going to add a free slider. And then another box to be a platform. For this box, I have to go to the properties and make sure that it is movable. Okay, so now we need input to the free slider. So we need to move this in X and Y coordinates to make a circular movement. 
but how do we get those x and y positions? So basically, I will have to compute the position when angle is zero, which is here. And then as the angle increases to so let's say 45 degree, the position will be updated to here. So yeah, we need angle to position to compute this. And the input of angle to position nodon is angle right. So the input of this angle to position is going to be a full circle which is 0 to 360. And then I'm going to connect this one to angle input. I'm going to do the counter setting. Starting value depends on where you want to start the platform. I, I will keep it as 0 for now. And then for the mode, it has to be loop from 0 to 360. Here, if you only want like half circle, you can also change it to be from 0 to 180. Close it. But now I also need to change the counter value, right? I'm going to move it at constant speed. So I'm adding a constant node on to keep incrementing the counter. So now we have the angle input. But what to do with the output? For the horizontal position, we can send it to x directly. And for the vertical position, we will send it to y input. Okay, let's see it. Yeah, so now we have a platform that moves in circle, but the radius of the current circle may be too small. What if we want a bigger circle? So to have a bigger circle, basically we have to time a constant to this output. So I'm going to add a map. Go to the settings. Let's say I want a circle with radius 4. I will set input range to be from 0 to 1, output range to be from 0 to 4. Make sure that range restriction is disabled. And we need two maps, one for each position. Then I'm going to connect the horizontal output to map, and then map to X, then vertical position to map, and map to Y. Okay, let's take a look. Yeah, so now the circle is bigger, right? And yeah, you can adjust the radius to be whatever you like. The second example is how to make this moving platform better. When the person is at the top, right, you can see the person keeps bouncing. Yeah, we can fix that. So the idea is we should slow down when we are at the top or when we are at the bottom. But how? Okay, so let's look at vertical position of this output. You may notice that at negative 90 degree, the y value change quite slowly, but then it will change faster here, and then it will change slowly here again. So we can apply this to our moving platform. We will slow down the movement at the top to reduce the bounciness of the character. So again, to make a moving platform, I will need a base box, free slider, and a box that connects to the top of it. And what about the y output? As I mentioned earlier, I will need an anchor to position node on. And for the input, it is going to be from negative 90 to 90. Um, the starting value can be anywhere from negative 90 to 90. The mode this time will be bounce. Because when we are at 90, we do not want to go back to negative 90, right? We want to go back to like 89, 88, and so on. How the timing is while not zero. And yeah, we need to keep incrementing this counter. So I'm going to add a constant one. And yeah, if I connect this vertical position to Y directly, it will only move up one meter and then down one meter. Um, I'm going to make this faster a bit. So I'm going to increase the constant value to be 3. I mean, you can adjust this. 
counter now I have two platforms side by side. For the left one, I use the counter output directly. For the right one, I use the output form anchor to position node on. So what will happen here is that it will slow down slightly at the top. And let's check if it is still bouncy. See, it is no longer bouncy. Yeah, compared to the original platform. This one, the character will bounce at the top. Again, if you want to increase the range of movement, like let's say you want to go further high up, you can add a multiplication here, like let's say times 2 or times 3 or times 4. And that's it for today's tutorial. I hope now you have a good understanding of Anchor to Position Nodon. In a future tutorial, I can show you how to use this to do infinity sign movement or even a heart shape. Okay, so lastly, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Bye-bye, and see you in the next video or live stream.